So in this video, we're going to look at the structures of the eye. The eye, it's um, another uh, organ of the special senses. And uh, the eye has three different layers. So it has the outer layer that's called the sclera, which anteriorly you can see it as the white portion of our eye. And then it has a middle portion, which is called the uvea or choroid, where we have the blood vessels. And it has an inner layer that is called the retina. We will see where they are located. Now, this is the anterior view of the eye. And anteriorly, what you can see uh, at some point covering the sclera will be a membrane that is called the conjunctiva. And then here in this mid portion, uh, there is this thin epithelium, simple squamous epithelium that is called the cornea. The cornea is part of these structures uh, that helps to bring the light into the retina. So the rays of light brought into the retina by the refraction of the light by the cornea. And then uh, we have the lens that also helps to bring the light into the retina because in the retina it's where we have the photoreceptors which are the cells that can detect the light and help us to see. Now this will be the lateral upper view in which we have the lacrimal gland which is the accessory gland of the eyes so that our epithelium within our eyes stays lubricated and then uh, we don't have any vision problems. Now, uh, just behind the cornea, we have the anterior cavity of the eye. And then uh, within the anterior cavity of the eye, so this is the cornea, we have this uh, fluid that is called the aqueous humor. And then that aqueous humor, it is produced by mo uh, some uh, cells that are called the cells of the ciliary body that are next to this structure that we call the iris. The iris is our color part of our eye. And then in the middle of the iris, we have the pupil. Now the iris, it has a couple of muscles. It has one muscle that surrounds the pupil that is called the circular muscle. And these are smooth muscle fibers. And when these uh, circular fibers uh, contract, it will decrease the size of the pupil. Why it will contract? Well, it will contract to prevent so much rays of light reaching the retina and damaging the retina. So this will happen during bright light. And when you constrict your pupil, this will be called meiosis. Now we have uh, then some fibers in the pupil of muscle that runs like this radially this will be called the radial fibers is smooth muscle as well and these ones when they contract they open the pupil when do we open the pupil when there is a dim light so we can increase the number of rays of light that goes into the retina when you open your pupil more to gather more light this is called midriasis and then these uh, fibers of the pupil the radial and the circular. They are under the influence of the ANS through cranial nerve number three or oculomotor. Okay, so uh, then this is the iris. And then again, in between the iris and the cornea, we have the anterior cavity of the eye filled with aqueous humor that it is produced by these muscles or, or these cells in here of the ciliary body. Now, here we have the lens. So the lens is a biconvex uh, structure that helps together with the cornea to bring the rays of light into the retina. Both of them are very important. If a flying object come and damage the cornea, like in this case, <laughs> you will lose the epithelium of the cornea uh, if, if it's a permanent injury, you more than likely uh, will become blind. 
Now, uh, sometimes after uh, the age of 50 or 60, there will be some deposits of proteins and other molecules into our lens, clouding the lens, and this will be called a cataract. Now, the lens is easily replaceable, so when someone has cataracts, they can uh, put another lens and the person uh, more than likely will regain the visual acuity. However, with the corneas, it's a little bit harder because the corneas are so important that <clears throat> not so many people will donate the corneas. I mean, you can purchase them, uh, <clears throat> but they are very expensive and they are hard to get. So uh, now then posteriorly to the lens, we have the posterior chamber of the eye, which is filled with uh, vitreous humor, which is much denser than the aqueous humor that we have in the anterior cavity. This vitreous humor, uh, it looks like if it was a jelly-like uh, substance. And then <clears throat> in the middle portion of the eye, we have the choroid with these blood vessels that provides blood supply to the different structures of the eye. Okay, so choroid or uvea. So this will be the middle layer. And then the most internal layer will be the uh, retina with photoreceptors and other cells that helps to take the, the different uh, lights uh, or rays of light. And then with the photoreceptors, that are subdivided into cones and rods, we can detect the different tones of color in our environment. So the cones, they detect three types of color, and then the information uh, from the different ranges of this type of color, the action potentials that they generate, can form the different uh, varieties of color. So. We have cones for red color, cones for green color, and cones for blue. Out of these three, we can mix the information coming from the environment and then we can form the different colors. And then the rods, they only take uh, tones of gray or, or black color. And then these photoreceptors, they send these axons into the portion of the retina that it's here where we have the emerging of the cranial nerve number two, the optic nerve. So there is this part of the retina that it is found in here that it is called the optic cup. So this is where we don't have any photoreceptors, just the axons exiting of the optic nerve. And this is where we have the blind spot. Now on the side of the uh, optic cup, we have an area where we have the greatest concentration of photoreceptors. This is called the macula lutea. And within the middle of the macula lutea, we have the fovea. So this is the area of sharpest vision. So this is where we, we can see the best. So most of the rays of light through the cornea and the lens will be reflected and refracted into this area. So you can see the best, okay? So this is the area of the sharpest vision. Now some external structures of the eye will be the extrinsic muscles of the eye, like the superior rectus, the uh, lateral rectus, the medial rectus, and the inferior rectus. And as well, we have the superior oblique, which is this, and then the inferior oblique, which is this. So these extrinsic eye muscles are controlled by different cranial nerves. So this one, the superior oblique, it is controlled by cranial nerve number six. And then this one by cranial nerve number four. 
and then the rest by cranial nerve number three. And these help us to move our eyes up and down, uh, laterally, medially, up and out, down and out. I, I will explain those in a different video. And this is all uh, for, for the eye.